Halo. K-Bash would never make a Halo video. Hey! Hello? From the moment it dropped, people knew Halo was important. For a humble Xbox FPS, it sure knew how to bring people together. It made for a hell of a game going alone or playing with friends. It pushed boundaries, exceeded expectations, demanded attention, and captured something vital to the human spirit at its core. Halo, above everything, spoke an almost universal language. I'm not here to talk about multiplayer game balance, the entirety of the Halo story and lore. I just want to talk Halo. For this video, I played through the campaigns on Heroic, as they say, the intended way to play, and if that's a problem, it's you I will slay. Seriously though, these games are so interesting, genuinely funny, and it's not like multiplayer is the only thing there is. At the turn of the millennium, you couldn't assume your game was gonna be played by friends. And they still managed to knock it out of the park, baby! Let's go! I love Halo Combat Evolved. They weren't afraid to open with that cold ring and chorus. It's genius. Let's you know right away, this isn't just a muddy man dude shoot game. Halo was interested in challenging what an FPS needed to be. Like Halo 1, a lot of early FPS games didn't have a sprint button, but many let the player move at incredible speeds and really embraced chaos and wrist damage. Ah! Halo said, wait, Okay, go. Halo's a slow game. Methodical is the better word. The player is taught, at least on heroic and up, to play cautiously, to observe from afar, thin enemy ranks at a distance, and move in when you know you can win. Use any kind of cover to your advantage. Yeah, you might have a shield, it's just that it takes a whole light year without being touched to recharge, so you know. No f***ing around. Unless you like picking up health packs and getting blinded. Thank you, I am no longer dying but now have a different problem? Enemies actually react to your choices. If you kill a lieutenant, its subordinates devolve into flailing terror. If you stick one with a plasma grenade, they just shriek and... If you chuck a frag grenade, they'll roll away. Yo, wait, what are you doing? Enemy types are conservatively varied, apart from whatever weapons they're holding, but they're not the only challenge on offer. Every encounter takes place in a new environment, at least for the first half, and the design of these arenas often adds new facets and approaches to gameplay while limiting others. It's evolving combat. <laughs> Everybody's heard Halo dev Jamie Griezmer's design snippet on making a half minute of fun gameplay as a base and iterating on it to make an interesting game. That ain't a joke, okay? Halo is a very simple game, but rarely gets stale with the amount of variance the core loop embraces. Even dying's kind of fun with the spectacular flops the chief gets into. Though there's a bit of a fixation on his ass. A tear for what could have been. The central conflict of Halo is perfect for the game too. Mankind gets pulled into a planetary struggle by a hostile alien collective, and they're not outmanned and outgunned. You're assisted by fellow soldiers most of the way. You just happen to be the one dude bad enough to get it done, and you're a biologically enhanced super soldier. They really hype it up too. They capture her, they'll learn everything. Force deployment, weapons research, Earth. It's a simple thing, but it's cool how the human and alien weapons compare. Human weapons hit hard and fast for the most part, and when they don't, they f***ing explode. And please, keep your mortal head lowered in the presence of God Emperor Default M6 UNSC Pistol. Thing will take down an aircraft. JESUS! The Covenant's weapons, conversely, are slow. Either zip across the screen or lazily swim through it. Look like you'd find him in a box of Cracker Jack. As opponents, the Covenant never feel unfair because you can dodge a lot of their incoming damage. But they're not bad weapons. You're often gonna run out of whatever weapon's ammo and have to pick up an enemy's gun. And they've got their strengths. Eating shields for breakfast. Noob combo. Homing needles that'll explode at critical mass. You know, a, a bad aim forgiveness weapon. It's all part of the well-tuned narrative that the encounters weave. It's a story of adaptation, survival, told through combat. The other essential ingredient that Halo used to vary its gameplay was vehicles that let you traverse the giant zones and added further layers to battles. They could have just dropped you from place to place with a little screen flash, but now it's an adventure. I'm flying, mom. I'm really doing it. Vehicles are great, they let you cruise, they let you take in the sights, they let you run the trucks down, and they're hilariously destructible. This game is truly incredible. You know, safety tip, don't stand and watch too long 
Oh, motherfuck! Maybe it's weird to say, but I don't think shooters get enough credit for the gameplay experience they provide. Like, the narrative says shooter is for dumb stupids with no brain, but Halo's all about thinking and reacting in sublime concordance. Or it's for dumb stupids, I, I ain't care. Like, every encounter requires threat analysis, priority making, deliberate execution, mindfulness of health and positioning, split-second calculation in case things go wrong. Yeah, it's not rocket science, but it's a whole lot more engaging than a random battle in a JRPG. It's just fascinating what your brain can do, and how much of it gets painted as dumb and unimportant. Anyway, scrubbing through the footage revealed something I've been trying to communicate that I believe is essential to Halo. I don't want to die out here! humor. It's dripping from every orifice, it's seeping from every hole. Everything about Halo conceptually is serious business, but once all the actors start moving, it's chaos! Grenades stuck, grunts scream and run until they pop. Dying is still hilarious. Why is everything? Everyone flying away! And perhaps most sickening of all, the return of ass. For all the good Halo does, it kind of tanks in later levels with the return of the Flood. The weird biomass zombies just... Spare me your lore document? They're not awful, they just change the dynamic of combat, which was once about tactical and often long to mid-range play, but quickly becomes a three-foot flowchart experience. You know, blast the closest one, or hit him, whatever, don't f*** oh. up. If you do, you're dead. They'd be a quality challenge, something to spice up the flow of the game, but they just kind of take over the campaign, and then you run it back through huge swaths of completed content, and yeah, it's a different kind of challenge. Watching the Flood and Covenant duke it out and having to choose to engage, it's more of a repurposing than a copy-paste, but god damn it drags through the library. Heroic, if it's your first time or you're not great, is a bit of a struggle. The Legendary squad doesn't care, but I've often heard that Legendary requires extremely specific lines of play, while Heroic is too easy for them, but at least it's open-ended. No matter how you play, it's a journey. Not just because you're hauling ass through enormous zones, but because every step is a challenge. You're fighting from the very moment you arrive on Halo, you know, and it culminates in that tense warthog race to escape. You've watched allies explode, you've exterminated countless foes, probably died a fat chunk of times, and at the end, you leave it all behind. Well, you've got your AI at least. Combat Evolved took me aback. Nothing about this game is sad. Hardly anything about it has serious emotional weight. It has a moment, sure, but with everyone having as much fun as they are, it's hard to honestly call it sad. But the ending made me tear up. Something about the strings, about the isolation of space, of watching the memory of your entire journey die definitively of did anyone else make it scanning just dust and echoes we are all that's left it's something only halo could have done it feels like the pulp sci-fi that made me cry of course you know they made another in that game Woo! it's like going to get a mcchicken and they're like how about two Holy shit. Halo 2 weapon! Halo 2, the quintessential sequel, the mechanically perfected installment. Cut the clip. It doubled up on everything. More multiplayer maps, more weapons, more unique campaign environments, more story, enemies, vehicles, you truly love to see it. More importantly, this installment advances the core gameplay and series aesthetics in interesting ways. It's apparent in the first level, you know, actually having a space level in their sci-fi game, but additionally, looking out the window and... Oh no, there was people there. And in that brief moment, believing the game is taking a more serious tone, the Master Chief gets on a bomb, flies out into space, and decimates the enemy fleet. Yeah! Play stupid games, win stupid prizes! So they went out of their way to sell spectacle. It's not just that the Scarab tank's in the cutscene, right? It's blowing up your guy, walking over you and making you watch, all so you can infiltrate the thing later and take it down. You ain't find that in Metroid, one thing Halo always did well was selling the alien planet concept with green, blue, and gray. That's crazy to me, man. That's just Earth. But it was all the Forerunner architecture found on Halo that did the heavy lifting. I'm proud to report that Halo 2 has not lost its touch. Good. God! And aside from visuals and spectacle, the game matured conceptually in a surprising way. First off, whoever handled naming in the first place, absolute legend. A quick look at the proper nouns includes ships like the Pillar of Autumn and the Truth and Reconciliation. Jesus Christ, gamers must have been terrified. That's some book learnt naming, son! Then Halo 2 walks in with the Covenant's overt spirituality, religiosity, their capitals called High Charity. They can't stop throwing around words like heretic. They call 
Master Chief Demon. They've got hierarchs, and though the series' general use of religious references is well documented, it doesn't get enough credit for intentionally and successfully inflating the importance of the game and its universe by tapping into the cultural understanding of Western gamers while spinning it as alien. The narrative has surprisingly matured from the first game by presenting a dual narrative of human celebration and covenant disgrace. We see the one commander of the Covenant forces shamed, stripped of his title, branded a heretic, his community and faith scapegoating and castigating him, then allowing his redemption only as a suicide soldier of the faith, a foil to Master Chief. It ain't bad for FPS. And Halo isn't scared to talk about faith, okay? And that's significant. You've got the Virgin Assassin's Creed going, I do not think there was a god. Oh no, there's gods. Meanwhile, at the Chad Halo, Religious Jogma! <laughs> This game emblemizes a kind of sophistication it has no business parading, but it works. Earlier I mentioned that Halo encapsulates a sort of humanity that lets it transcend mere gamehood. I'd like to think that's true, partially because of all the weird marketing campaigns, the ARG for example that the company rolled out, or because of the way Halo inspired people to come together, sweating and stinking up wherever with their land parties, uh, with the humor. <laughs> but to touch on the note about gameplay from earlier, Halo 2 embraced adaptivity, surely not not just a human trait, but one of the species best, as a conceptual undertone in combat. So for everyone who's done with me waxing pseudo-academic, y'all can pick up two guns and start blasting aimings for think brains. <laughs> it's a shame the pistol fell so far, but it do work. It do work. Actually, why'd they kill the pistol but keep the noob combo? Like, I like doing it, but it's just so flowcharty. It feels anti-Halo, you know? Combat does feel a lot more tactical with the loss of the assault rifle and inclusion of battle rifle and carbine. Still, it's cool that the weapon designers were interested in increasing the skill ceiling of their game. So dual wield is cool. Pairing up, mixing and matching, you're not usually gonna find a similarly full and same type weapon, so you gotta be flexible. And you always look cool doing it. You sacrifice your melee attack to dual wield as well, so any overpoweredness the mechanic brings comes with at least some trade-off. And hey, you can still melee, you'll just drop your other weapon. Though perhaps some weapons did not need the option. Oh god. Oh my god! I like the system, it's opt-in and non-intrusive. I think, ideally, the player's supposed to flow from combat to combat, always picking up new stuff, ducking behind cover, unloading their mag, and rearming in a constant loop. It doesn't usually play like that, unfortunately, but it gets close. The trouble being, normal mode's too easy to worry about weapon selection, and playing hard aggro in heroic can be more punishing. Yeah. snipers. The enemies came back with better overall design. Grunts are largely the same, but jackals are consistently deployed as snipers now. Elites are basically the same, but at least they'll try more often to take you out if they're stuck with a grenade. They added these horrible flying enemies. I hate these guys. How dare you force me to aim? And the hunters from before, which died to a single shot, praise be to the god king, return as actual threats. There was never a point where I was like, oh yay, hunters. But hold on, a new challenger is approaching the ring. Brutes. Sorry, sidebar, why they give all these guys one note Outriders class names? Grunts? Brutes? Dude's name is Tartarus, bro, he been read his Greek myths! Brutes add another layer to typical combat where they'll start berserking and melee you down if you can't get a headshot. Add to this the increased weapon variety enemies pelt you with and the dual wield mechanic, and new lines of play start to emerge, which, good on you, Halo 2, that's all you had to do. And skulls were cool, you know, letting you get away from the prescribed difficulties and letting you craft your own challenge. Tanks and other vehicles could be a problem in the first game if you weren't immediately equipped to deal with them, though you basically always were. This game noticed that and gave the player more options. Chief, your weapons won't work on that tank's plating. Double back and find an explosive. What? In the literal fu- Yes, Halo 2 is great. It's a real splody game. That's a quote. Save that. And all the humor, the chaos of Halo is captured just like before. It's not often a game's firing on all cylinders, correctly. And even if some Dungeons and Dragons dweebs like me would have sneered and said, Ugh, sci-fi and guns. They put an energy sword in, man, come on! Never mind the weird exploits you can pull, it lets you do so much interesting vertical environment scaling. It lets you EI strike the final boss? Yes, bosses. So first off, the campaign is split into two trails with the Chief and the Arbiter, and see the Master Chief gets a flashlight, and the Arbiter gets cloaking. Mm-hmm. The missions are varied as usual, varied battles, unique challenges, vehicle sections, very much in line with the theme of adaptivity. Eventually, you encounter the Flood, which... 
No. Two bosses have you play as the Arbiter, so any complaints about them can mostly be shut down with, you know, cloaking beats AI, but the Chief gets to take down a Prophet. Chief, the Prophet's absorbing gunfire with some kind of kinetic shield. You're going to need to find a way- Chief, what is wrong with you, son of a f- Of course, they pushed variants and adaptivity. They're the things that made Halo's gameplay great. It's okay to let those things dictate the story Halo is telling. I think Halo 2 is always going to be remembered as a meaningful sequel, something that contributed great things to a solid base, even if it got a little spicy. Because at the end of the day- Mr. Chief? Mind telling me what you're doing on that ship? Sir, finishing this fight. Oh yeah, let's get him! But none of that matters because Halo 3, good. You know, it's funny. I don't think 3 evolved the series gameplay all that much, but as soon as you turn the thing on, you know you're in for it. Ah, there it is. The nostalgia hitting home like a bag of bricks. Oh man, my old avatar is still here. Aw, oh, jeez, dude. Halo 3, the big one. 2 might have been Halo's proper introduction to consistent online play, but Halo 3 had this unbelievable proliferation, and at a time when... <clears throat> other games were struggling. It seemed like everybody was playing all the time, even me, the kid who hated shooters. There's a lot to say. Here goes. Halo 3, gameplay redefined. Halo 3 didn't add a ton to the core, but if you've been hearing me, you know it added more flavors. We saw the addition of brute weapons, rough and brutal companions to the sleek Covenant lineup. Halo always had power-ups, overshields, cloaking, but now there's deployable equipment, trip mines, the infamous bubble shield, health regenerators, a worse version of the health pack from Halo 1? Okay, guys, come on! And my favorite, the grav lift, which let the player overcome vertical stage design with some clever placement. Overall, they really made a splash. Ooh, baby, that's a flying hog. <laughs> <laughs> they jammed a whole pack of new vehicles in, and you know you're doing it right when the kid who doesn't know what a Lambo is, apparently this, thinks your cars are cool. Yo, brute chopper, baby! <laughs> And everyone knows the Banshee's basically the best thing ever. Thank you, Bungie, for your gift to the human species. But they finally went in and gave the UNSC a comparable, actually just outright better flying vehicle. Look at how cool, oh my god! It's not much of an addition, but Melee kind of sucked sometimes in the past, and now it's just outright good. Like two hits and another player is eating dirt. That's important when you're trying to move away from the carbine battle rifle dominance of two and need your terrible, terrible console players to not feel too lost when fighting battle rifle opponents online. God bless you, Assault Rifle Melee Bros, never forget. Not an addition here, but something I've ignored because I played the PC versions of the first two games. You might have heard that Halo good? One thing Halo 1 did right was use the twin stick setup in a shooter. Everyone knows that. Another is developers realizing that controls can't just match a mouse and keyboard. <laughs> So they made bullets stickier when your crosshair lit up and let the reticles slow down when passing over an enemy. Basically made it player friendly without being dumb stupid. The designers clearly cared about the player experience. Above making the game playable, the finale is packed with aesthetic triumphs. I don't care who says what, that bloom effect, that soft glow on everything the light touches, that... I don't need an analogy, that shit's beautiful. The incredibly dense foliage, the sweeping vistas, who's doing this stuff, man? Yeah, other shooters sometimes looked good, but God, Halo's so good at making you feel like a small, insignificant being in a much greater universe, when it hardly ever uses actual space. It just lowered the reticle, gave you more room to use, and put you near cliffs. Incredible. And yes, everything's still exploding. Thanks for asking. Getting ready to blow up the trogs. Thank you, dipshit. I don't even know what's going on here. It just looks great. You're still gonna die a thousand spectacular flaming deaths. Halo 3 is spectacle redefined. Those scarab tanks from 2 return at one point side by side, and you got to, according to the paper here, board them with your flying vehicle, infiltrate them, and destroy their cores, and make it out safely. So much attention to detail, dude. They're so willing to reward the player versus everyone narrative. You actually get to feel good about yourself, even if it's for seconds at a time. Also, humor is still a big part of the dressing, but Halo 3 moves the series beyond pulp, beyond silliness on alien planets and incidental mishaps. Yeah, they still happen, but the series has gone full-blown cinematic. It has to. It's a finale. The end of an era. No longer on two separate paths, the Arbiter officially teams up with the UNSC to defeat the Prophet of Truth. Spoiler alert for like five minutes ago. Everybody's here. Dramatic narration. But you had something they didn't. Something no one saw but me. A damsel. 
AI in distress, wacky main character mental problems, I loosed damnation on the stars. A kind of obvious betrayal from Captain Disturbing Imagery. Another betrayal as the floating ball's goals conflict with your own and like, have I even talked about them? It's like this. Silence, mortal. <laughs> Kick his ass. Oh, 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 Shine, you metal pustule. Halo's story was never incredible, but it housed the gameplay well, and now the stakes are higher than ever. Stand and fight together or lose everything. Halo successfully wove a narrative about standing united in a game that was nothing without its community. The integrated media options, players empowered to capture their triumphs, share their clips, post to YouTube or to the community site. Halo punched its way into the public conscious. If you didn't know about Halo, you weren't paying attention. The devs gave the players the tools to create create their own stages, their own game modes, content made by fans, for fans that would be shared and replayed time and time again, and if you didn't, I swear, you didn't have internet. Because who's playing Halo without friends? With friends you could group up through your trashy Xbox controller headset and challenge the campaign. We spent so much time crunching on Legendary, carrying the one weak link, it was probably me, and even though my internet died when the last cutscene rolled, cursing my account to eternal heroic completion only, I remember that push and heartbreak over a decade later. Countless hours loading into big team battles, fighting, striving to get just a little better, to capture that next awesome Halo moment, challenging my supremely average self to improve with more than just the assault rifle, clawing up the kill count in deathmatch so I'd be good enough to challenge my friends, fighting for new equipment for ranks, so I could say, after everything, that all of this meant something. Something. And somewhere along the way, I failed to realize it wasn't the ranks or the cosmetics, the achievements, the clips or creations. It was those moments spent with the people I cared about that made Halo great. And one day, that all stopped. ODST, Halo Wars, Halo Reach, none of them could give what the Halo trilogy did or inspire, at least for me. It's just white noise. Fun, forgettable white noise. These are the things you can't get back. You lived your glory days and now life's just washed. A little dramatic, but you know, more or less. Hey, it's K-Bash. Special thanks goes out to my $4 patrons, whose names are on the screen. The show's on its way somewhere good thanks to the community's generosity. And special thanks goes out to my extra generous patrons who are... Errol. Azero. Bazcart, Beverage Crisp, Boha, Brandon, Caesar T, Chief, Cody Golden, Corgi the Lad, Couch Moba, Crack Stuntman, CW Glassworks, Kyle Lapreed, David Castillo, Den Het, Don't Worry About It, Dylan Coffee, Exa, Frankenstitch, Harkaj, Huey, Jason Lasky, Jaden, J. Deus, John Weber, Joke Frog, Justin Sherry, Kelvin, Latrix, Laundry Mom, Lego Sid, Mark Yulees, Marmato, Maximilian Wolfgang Niver, Milky Moo Official, Mr. Dodongo, Miles Burris, Neatsy, Old Burgle, Only LK, Horn Magnus Palson, Pink Peacock, Quillworth, Reggie Rodriguez, Ricochet Frame, Salty Smasher, Sam Anga, Sekai Noah Warida, Seamus Nerd, Shod, Simp God, Special Children, Super Sandwich Guy, Tenken Zephyrborn, Thrips Heartrop, Travis Edwards, Venom, Vic, Walter Taggart. Well, shit. Zachary Shields. Zachary V. Zanasso. Zane the Impure. Zane the Pure. If you'd like to help support the show and make it even better, check out my Patreon. We've got all kinds of goals and lots of rewards in store. Stay tuned for more. K-Bash out.